Look at your memory verse, if you don't mind, in James chapter 1, verse 21. In chapter 1, verse 21, it says, Wherefore lay apart our filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the encrafted word which is able to save your souls. <clears throat> this verse is really, really amazing when you stop and think about it. Because he said first, Receive with meekness the encrafted word. Do you know what encrafted means? It means something that's already inside you. Implanted. One version says implanted. He says receive the word that's already implanted in you. Now we have a memory verse and I want you to take it with you and I want you to learn it. But there's enough word in you right now to overcome the enemy. There's enough word in you right now to overcome the flesh. He said receive the encrafted word, the word that's there. Now when he said receive it, <clears throat> it's in you. How do you receive it? Well, how do you not receive it? If I have a word inside of me and I've not received it yet, it's almost like a word that's sitting on a shelf inside my heart. It's just sitting there. It's for a future use. If I was going to use it right now, it wouldn't be on a shelf, right? So now I've got this word and I've got it on the shelf and, I, and, and it's just sitting there. How many of you go to your pantry and just get a can of green beans and open it up and eat with a fork? If it's in your pantry and it's on the shelf and it's not prepared, then it's not for today. You're, you've got it there because you're going to use it at a later date. Even though I am likely at knowing me to do such a thing. But the truth is, if that can is sitting on that shelf in the pantry, it's not for today. If it was for today, it would already be out and already be prepared for today. <clears throat> Go in and open a bag of rice and start trying to eat it. It's not for today. It's for tomorrow. It's sitting on a shelf. It's in a pantry. We take the word and we set it on a shelf in our heart. And we say, next week, I'm going to study. Next year, I'm going to read the Bible through and through. Next week, I'm going to start praying. We set it on a shelf for a later date. When we're doing that, it becomes information and not revelation. But when we take the word of God and apply it to our life, and we write it on the walls of our heart and we embrace it and say that it's for me. It's not for Moses. Moses is dead. It's not for Elijah. Elijah is dead. The double portion is not for Elisha. Elisha is dead. Everything in that word is for me. So when I take that word and I embrace it and I call it mine and I write it on the walls of my heart, it becomes revelation to me. When it's revelation to me, then it's revelant to my life. It's revelant to the circumstance I'm in and revelant to the situation I'm in. It becomes revelant to my problem. It becomes revelant and to, to, my, to my distress, to my trouble. <clears throat> it's revelant to everything. And then it's useful. It's useful in my life. It's not information. It's revelation. And so we've got to allow the word to become revelation. But it won't become revelation until we get it off of that shelf and we embrace it. And so that's what this scripture is saying. It is saying, wherefore lay apart all filthiness, superfluity of naughtiness, and receive... With meekness, humble, be humble, receive with meekness the encrafted word. Receive the word that's already inside you. Hey, that's great news. We don't have to go study. We don't have to go fast. We don't have to go do anything but just receive what's already inside of us. That's a start. That's what he's saying. Get started. I'm talking to myself. Get started. Again, even though this seems to be so light, but at the end of this verse it says, which is able to save your souls. I don't know that we realize how serious these little things are, these little negative thoughts are. When James ended it with, uh, when he ended it with, uh, uh, the, the sin when it is finished bringeth forth death. In verse 15 and in verse 21 he said, which is able to save your souls. We have to embrace the word and we have to hold on to it. The Bible also, and Jesus gave a description of this when he said, it's the same as if you plant the word on a stony ground. You see, if there's a piece of stone and it has dirt on it and you plant a seed there and a flower grows up and there's no root base, and as soon as the sun comes up, the flower melts and goes down because there was no root base. And that's the same thing we do when we allow the word just to be information in our life and not revelation. 
There's no root base there. You see, when we come in and we praise and we had a great worship service and we study the word and we feel good and we feel on top and we feel like this is great. But as soon as we walk out and, and face the next battle tomorrow or even tonight, we melt back down again. And we step back underneath that black cloud, underneath that defeated life. Because the word inside of us is information and not revelation. It's on a shelf and it's not embraced. Until it's embraced, it does not apply. But it's there. And James says, take that word that's in you already and receive it. Embrace it. Stand on the promises. Everything in this word belongs to you. It only has two things in it. It's got commandments and promises. If you obey the commandments, the promises belong to you. It's a big, thick book, but there's only two things there. And it never changes. It never waters down. It never weakens. <clears throat> Elijah used it. Moses used it. Everyone that believed in God used it. And the great miracles performed in their life was there because they began to choose to think on positive things. Choose to think on God and rely on Him. When I got here tonight, I was just in a rush, and I don't know why, because I had plenty of time, but I got here and I was rushing around and I was trying to remember everything that I could think of, everything I was supposed to think of, and I got back there and people started praying for me, and God just said, I got this. And I just thought, why didn't I know that? What's wrong with me? He said, you don't have to bring a ministry to them, all you got to do is bring me. And that's what I'm doing tonight, I'm just bringing him. I'm just bringing his word. And it's not that deep and it's not, that, it's, 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 it's not necessarily that long. It's not going to be that long. But it's powerful and it's a simple little truth that we've got to hang on to. I love to jump and shout and run and spin and anything. I, I, if it's going on, I want to go. I want to be there. I'm not kidding you. I just, I just, I just the, the anointing is always, always draws us in. And it's great. But it's the word that sustains us. It's the word that holds us up. It's the word that carries us through the bad times. <clears throat> I thought also in the very first part of that verse where he says, Wherefore, lay apart <clears throat> all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. He said, lay it apart. He didn't say cast it out. If he had said cast it out, then I would say, hey, it's a demon. He didn't say cast it out. He said lay it apart. Have you heard somebody say before, I'm going to take these cigarettes and just lay them down. Break the habit. And James was saying concerning these things, just lay it down. Almost as if he was talking to us about a habit. It's not some big demonic thing. It's a habit. We've trained ourselves and train our mind, if we're not careful, to think on negative things. But the Bible says to think on whatsoever things are true, pure, honest, and of good report. <clears throat> he said to capture your thoughts. Cast down imagination in every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity, embrace, bring into captivity every thought unto the obedience of God. It's a powerful truth that's so simple, we know it and learned it as a child, but we drop those little basic things because we get into these big spiritual things. The disciples were in these big spiritual things. And they dropped this little basic thing. This little basic thing says, quit thinking about yourself and the great things you've done and think about Jesus. They dropped that little basic thing because they were, got so tied up into the, I'm one of the twelve. They got so tied up into, I'm in the ministry. I'm, I'm, I was called. He said he would make me a fisher of men. I'm a fisher of men. They dropped this little basic thing. They were expecting the enemy head on. He ain't coming. He's a coward. He's a defeated foe. He's not coming head on. He's coming from behind. It's important that we be soberly minded and understand that it's the word inside of us that becomes revelation that changes our life. I think sometimes, in my case, I'm waiting on something extra to come to bring victory. I need something bigger, something better, something extra. More of the Word, more prayer, more anointing, more fasting. I need something bigger, something better. And God said, take what's inside of you and just receive it. Take what's inside of you and just embrace it. Call it yours. It's there for you. 
it's then that we begin to spill over into other people. And that's amazing to me. It's simple, but it's true. If y'all would come back up here again.